Namaste. Subscribe to our channel, like the video, and do leave a comment below so YouTube recommends this to more like minded souls. I have to sell my book now. <laughs> so, the final chapter of the book, India, Bharat, and Pakistan The Constitutional Journey of a Sandwich Civilization, is titled Malegaon, Malabar, Kohat, and Gulbarga. Because Malegaon riots of 1924, during the Khilafat period, has been discussed. Malabar because of the Mopla outage of 1921. My book is going to be launched on 23rd of August. On 21st of August 1921 is when the Mopla riot started. It was not a riot, it was called an outrage, even by going by British standards. I'll leave it, I, without revealing further, you should read it. Kohat, I'll give as an example which is relevant to the situation here. By 1901, Kohat had a overwhelming, so Kohat is in uh, Northwest Frontier, which is today Khaydar Pakhtunwa. Now, over 95% was Muslim, or 93% at least. So in September 1924, if my memory serves me right, around Janmashtami, in Kohat, which had a 93 versus 7 ratio between Muslims and Hindus, they come out with a derogatory poem, or let's say a publication on Krishna, on Janmashtami. So the Sanatan Dharm Sabha, the secretary of that particular organization, Jeevan Das, wrote a poem in response. And all hell broke loose. Because the entire community was under siege. So what does the whole community do to save their knowledge? The all the elders of the Hindu community of Kohat, they write a communal apology. Maafe kar do. Hame jeene do. Is there an kya hota hai? The Muslims of Kohat drum up support from the border tribes, from the local Khilafat committees. Aja. And by the night, Hindu shops and Sikh shops and Hindu places, they are torched. Hindus go on writing to the police. Help us, help us, help us, come. Do din Sarvanash. Two days it just goes on. It's 93 versus 7. And this is the remote outpost of the British Indian territory. Already the presence of the British army and police is less. And you are surrounded effectively in what would be future Pakistan. So when this happens, finally the British government wakes up after getting an SOS call. Rushes in the army and then says, Sabhi logon ko Rawalpindi cantonment leke jao. That's exactly how the Hindu and Muslim population was evacuated from Kohat. So much so, that in 1924 Congress session which was held in December in Belgaum, Gandhi is forced to recognize that this happened and he holds the Muslims of Kohat responsible. And he tells the Hindus, don't go back until the Muslims invite you. Mat jao bache. Until the Muslims promise the safety of your lives, livelihood and property and dignity, don't go back. Abhi tak wo yehi pe. Because Kohat ultimately became part of Pakistan. The population of Hindus today in Kohat is 0.01%. Overwhelmingly Muslim, 99 and something. These are real figures. I'm not even fibbing or faffing. Now, think of the Rangila Rasul episode. So, Khilafat ke time pe, all the Bollywood celebration on Hindu-Muslim unity, Hindu-Muslim unity is based on only six years of Indian history, 1916 to 1924. Because then the popular slogan was, hindu Musalman ki jai. Chai saal mein gaya. That honeymoon was, didn't even last six years. Usually a marriage, at least the honeymoon phase is seven years, wo itna bhi nahi tha. Six years, that's it. And after that, riots begin increasingly. Swami Shraddhanand of Arya Samaj is reconverting Muslims 
of Multan in those places back to the Hindu fold. Swami Shraddhanand was one of the vocal supporters of the Khilafat movement, by the way. Most people don't know this. And the other person who supported the Khilafat movement, I'll, the name is bound to shock you. The Shankaracharya of Sharda Peet. Yes, he was arrested for supporting the Khilafat movement and then he was released and acquitted. He shared space with the Ali brothers, Maulana Muhammad Ali and Shaukat Ali, supporting this movement vocally. Tilak supported Khil Khilafat movement. And there are, I have reproduced those documents. So then, when this happens, in order to provoke the Hindu community, they write a nasty piece of publication on Sitama. No different from a leader from Hyderabad today, who was acquitted. 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 Why? Because the person who translated his speech from Urdu to English for the court's consumption did it on the basis of an audio recording of that particular speech. And the court says, Aapne to suna hai. Dekha thodi hai speech ko. Nobody controverts the fact that he actually delivered that speech. They're saying, you were not present and when you translated, you did not see the video, you only saw the audio. Therefore, the translation by the head of department of the Urdu language studies, a Muslim herself, is rejected on this ground. Jai Judiciary, Jai Constitution. Now, therefore, ultimately, when they decide to write in response, Rangila Rasul, it flares up. Riots flare up. And to somehow clamp down on that particular situation, the British tries to, let's say, broker peace between the parties and the request or the, let's say the instruction that comes from the Muslim communities, we need a Sharia compliant blasphemy law. And that is 295A. The publisher of Rangila Rasul in true jihadi style is killed on the corridors of the court while the court proceedings are still going on. Can we let go of 295A? 